somehow the man who's not allowed to challenge for the World Heavyweight title won the money in the bank qualifying match. Riddle is the ultimate best friend. And the 24-7 title? Battle Royals? Water guns? Oh, it's Monday. Makes sense. Welcome to a brand new episode of Kimmy Talk Wrestling where we are reviewing last night's Monday Night Raw. And we are starting... week so uh, anxiety was not my friend last week so yeah I'm sorry but I, I, I was busy with AEW and Smack and I was busy on those days but Tuesday my anxiety was not my best friend so that sucked but now here I am and my anxiety's better now so yay so let's talk about this battle royal so Royal starts off with Adam Pearce and Tony Deville saying that for whatever reason I still don't know what the reason was that Randy couldn't make it to Raw, so he can't be in this triple threat last chance match. And having a battle royal to determine who's going to be the last man in the triple threat. And Riddle writes this note, and this note, he's trying to say that, you know, I want Riddle to take my place in the triple threat. He's my best friend. He's a bro, you know. And Adam's like, Riddle, you wrote this. Like, we can tell you wrote this. And Riddle's just like vouching his point, like, please let me be in it, please let me be in it, like, I'm gonna be Randy Orton! And so he's like, fine, just go. So, we do this battle royal, the final two were Damian Priest and Riddle, and Riddle gets to win. And he actually ran out to go tell the time, uh, like, the music person, play Randy's music, play Randy's music, that was kind of funny. So, this was interesting. Like I said, I don't know the real reason why Randy wasn't there. I don't know if, like, there's an emergency or, like, COVID or they just did it for kayfabe. But this was an interesting way to develop kind of the Randy Riddle storyline, especially if that's going to be the match of SummerSlam between Orton and Riddle. Um, although he didn't win at the end, as we know. But, you know, like, can we just imagine, like, Orton screwing over Riddle and the money in the bag and then they add leads to the match of SummerSlam? Like, that'd be really good. But this was interesting, I mean, it was a fine start. It was new, like something new, but it was good, it was okay. But the main event though. So we have this triple threat and it's AJ, Drew, and Riddle. And the match is going on, the match is really good. And like halfway through the match, he gets, Riddle gets thrown to the steps and he's like, oh my god, my foot, my foot, my foot, I think it's broken, I think it's broken, I think it's broken, because you know, he just decides to wrestle without shoes. So he goes to the back, and the match is about to end, and he comes back out, and Drew wins. So that just confuses me, because Drew can only challenge the Universal title on SmackDown, but like, why should he win? It would make so much sense for Orton and Riddle to both be in the match. What? Like, it, it, it doesn't make sense. Like, I don't, I don't understand why we kind of keep pushing Drew. Because now my fear is, like, since Money in the Bank is the one thing that Drew hasn't done, because he's literally done everything else besides a U.S. and a tag title, I think. It's what's holding him back from Grand Slam. I think it's the U.S. and tag team title. So, I don't understand why we keep pushing him. There's a lot more, like, you could have put eight, like, uh, well, you could have put AJ in there because they're first and regulars, but you could have put Orn in there, or, like, some, like, a Damian Priest, a Mustafa Ali, Mansoor, it just doesn't make sense that, like, we were trying to, like, keep on using Drew, and it's like, oh, it's the same storyline since we've been seeing since last year. Not cool anymore, do we? Bouncing off that, the 24-7 title, so the 24-7 title, I don't think, has been defended in, like, three weeks. So Tazal was the rate so as they each got elim so Tazal gets eliminated from the Battle Royal, then Gulak pins Tazawa, then R Truth pins Gulak, and then Tazawa pins R Truth. Why? Like you haven't you haven't even shown this title on TV in three weeks. 
No, like we get, we don't need it anymore. It can leave. It can leave. I promise you. No one is going to miss the 24/7 talent. Like no one misses Raw Underground. Remember when Raw Underground was a thing? Huh. But from ridiculous to another, um, this drip stick. This. So it was John Morrison versus Ricochet. And you know, Miz on commentary because he's hurt, and he was he had like the drip stick, and he literally took out a board like, he, like Ricochet sprayed Miz, and then you know, spraying back and forth there was a water gun. Well, like first of all, the only drip drip we have on Raw is, I mean, or WWE is Seth Rollins. First of all, second of all, why? Why do we need this? Like, why are we having water gun fights on Monday Night Raw? Come on. But something that was good is this MVP Kofi Kingston stuff. So Kofi came out there and Kofi was saying how, like, he has a win over Drew. And last week at the end of the Hell Cell match, like, when Xavier really, really needed him, he couldn't be there for him and it broke his heart. And MVP was like, oh, like, we don't mind beating up your friend again. And, you know, like, you're a nothing without, like, your little buddies and you don't work hard and... You know, look at how I took Bobby Lashley over the past year. He was nothing, you know, he's a champion and you're still, you know, just unicorns and bootios and best friends and Kofi was like firing back him. It was really good. Like this program is probably one of the strongest on Raw right now, which is really sad because <laughs> it should, like, well, I mean, it could be, but you know, it, if I think of Raw, I feel like that's the one thing I look at that I'm interested in. So. I like this. I know it's gonna lead to Kofi losing, but the other point that Kofi made that I like was like how we when he was traveling and defending the title on all the live events, he still went around the world and he went to Ghana and he showed children, you know, like it doesn't matter what you look like, you can still win this title. You know, dreams do come true, and you know it's true. And I really like that he mentioned that because it made his journey different. And I think it's gonna be a really good match. And next week we have Lashley and Woods. In a one-on-one -on -one match, which is kind of interesting. I mean, I'm assuming that Lashley's gonna win anyway, unless Wood wins by surprise, which like triple threat. No, that hmm, that was really like all main points that happened in a row. I mean, you know, it did flow fast, and I don't know if it's because like the, my it was the first day of camp day, and like time was just going really really fast for me. But it flowed nice. I mean, there's still, like, Drew winning to me is just, like, why? But, I mean, it wasn't the worst episode. It wasn't the best. Like, it's still okay. You know, I'm still hopeful, like, when crowds come back, we'll be, we'll be able to run again. But, yeah. Um, we'll be back with NXT tomorrow. I promise. We are doing everything this week. Um, keep in mind that for the rest of summer, I will be working at camp. So, I'll be hella tired, but it's okay. Because... This is the fine dream anyway. So yeah. Make sure to like this video, comment, subscribe, and tell me what you all hated and loved about one an era. And that's it for me.